Welcome everybody to our webinar session. We are very excited about having you today. We will start soon, but first we will mention some points related to the organization of the session. Your microphone is on mute. We will keep this feature as it is to provide an organized session to avoid background noise and interruptions during the presentation. However, we have a messenger option. In the bottom of the screen, you will see an icon. You can submit written questions by typing them at, at any time. We would like to have an interactive session and discussion, so please feel free to send your questions. As I said, you may send them at any time and we will collect and address them at the end of the presentation. You will be able to count with the presentation that will be shown during the conference. It will be sent by email on PDF right afterwards. Now I would like to introduce our speaker. Mr. Marco Girotto holds a master's degree in industrial chemistry and has been working for five years in the Technological Center of Maris, one of the leading companies in the manufacturing of co-rotating twin screw extruders based in Rosta, Torino, Italy. Mr. Girotto has a role of the process expert together with a team of colleagues research and development, development of new applications, equipment optimization, and constant customer support are the basis of his activities. About the company, Maris is an Italian manufacturer of co-rotating twin screw extruders. Since it was founded in 1962, the company has claimed one of the leading positions in the research of new state-of-the-art applications for its products. With the aim of providing its customers with the widest range of choices, every mechanical component of Maris extruders are entirely in-house manufactured. About Vivol Consulting, the company was founded in 1999. Over the years, Vivol gathered an international team of experts and establish a large professional network involving researchers, decision makers, and authorities. In addition, Bible issues a free monthly newsletter on tire recycling and pyrolysis, which relates to all aspects of these industries and provide unique takes on the newest developments and trends. We hope you enjoy this session. Marco, please, whenever you want. Okay, I'm ready. So, um, good morning and uh, or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here attending this webinar with Vibold. I'm going to talk about our devulcanization technology by twin screw extruders. My talk will be in four parts. In the first part, I'll short, um, shortly introduce Maris and the twin screw uh, extruder. The second and the third parts are the core of the presentation. In those section, I'll talk about Mari's devulcanization process and the results in terms of case study. The last part will be about the conclusions. Mari's is located in Rosta, um, near Turin in Italy. Since 1962, Mari's is the uh, owner of its technology and its know-how is um, ensured by a fully in-house process involving all level of production, starting from design, engineering, manufacturing, assembling, and finishing with um, starting up of our lines. In the picture, you can see our Maris Technological Center, that it is our R&D department. The center of more than 1,000 square meter as at its disposal for fully um, equipped lines. From um, a laboratory scale, our 20 millimeter, to an industrial or pre-industrial scale, our 58 millimeters. Our R&D department <clears throat> doesn't just involve in trials with a wide range of materials, but it is also uh, active in process design and process support. We also have the possibility to run laboratory tests. The twin screw extruder is a very versatile machine. From master batches 
passing through high field compound reactive extrusion, hot melt to biopolymers with our mm, extruder, and thanks to our know-how, we are able to produce <clears throat> a wide range of different materials for different applications. Today, we are going to focus on rubber recycling and specific rubber devulcanization process. Now, giving you a better uh, understanding, I would like to uh, introduce in brief some feature of the extruder. The extruder is a continuous dynamic mixer able to produce every type of free flowing material. It is important to underline free flowing for material because this kind of machines need to be fed continuously and constantly. And this to get the product characteristics in terms of quality and production rate always under control. The extruder is also um, dynamic because during the run, you can modify the process parameter, parameters in real time, such as the screw speed, temperature profile, and the output, for example. The extruder can be divided in three macro zones, process zone, gearbox zone, and the electrical motor. In the process zone are located the screws, the barrel, and the side feeders or the gassing unit. The gearbox zone transfers the motor torque to the screws. As I told in the previous slide, in the process zone are located the screws. The screws are modular and contains different screw elements. The screw profile, that means how the elements are combined together, is the core of the extruder and the core of the know-how. There are two main different types of elements, the conveying elements and the kneading elements. The figure on the left shows the end view on the screw elements with an outline of a simulated barrel and the location of three distinct global poles. Each um, global poles is in a different screw channel. And for two lobe elements, like in this case, um, we have three different channels in the extruder. The conveying elements simply convey the material along the screw. There isn't any communication through the channels. On the other side, the kneading elements allow the communication through the channel. In this way, it is possible to get a good level of mixing. A very important geometrical parameter for the screw elements is the outside to inside diameter, the DD ratio. The left figure shows the main geometrical parameters of the element. The outer and the inner diameter, the distance A is the center line distance, and the distance H is the channel depth. The value of the center line distance and the channel depth is linked to the DD ratio. Um, there are different values of DD ratio on the market. Maris produced mainly elements with three different DD ratio, 1.55, 1.65, and 1.78, as shown in the table on the right. The two letters in the first line are um, related to a Maris coding linked to the torque of the machine. As we see in the table, this ratio affect other important parameter of the extruder. Comparing the value 1.55 and 1.78, we can easily say that increasing the DD ratio, the free volume and the resident time go up, while the shear stress and the shear rate go down. In the end, um, we can say that depends on the material to be processed, we can offer you a different DD ratio based on our know-how. Now let's move to the core of the presentation, talking about our patented process, the devulcanization. Before explaining you uh, our devulcanization process, I would like to make um, an introduction clarifying the main differences 
between a plastomer and an elastomer. When we talk about a plastomer, we refer to a standard polymer, like for example, polyethylene. If we uh, imagine to apply uh, a constant traction force to the material, and then under a certain level of deformation, we release it, the plastomer material doesn't return to the original shape and permanent deformation occur. On the other side, if we uh, apply and release force like before in an uh, elastomer material, rubber-like, the material will tend to return to the original shape. This behavior is due to the cross-link. There are chemical bonds between the polymer chains. The cross-linking is made by different ways. Physical way involves just hat or UV light. The chemical way uses the synergy of hat and curing system that could be both uh, sulfur-based or peroxide-based. Now that all the uh, introduction are made, I want to describe in details our devulcanization process. The picture shows uh, a schematic flow of what is um, our process. There are principally five consecutive stages to understand the entire devulcanization process. Starting from um, disposal material, either post-industrial or post-consumer, the waste is sorted out and grinded in a free-flowing form. This passage that doesn't involve Maris directly is critical because the material to be feed needs to be selected and free of contaminants, especially uh, metal contamination. Rubber crumbs powder feeds the twin screw uh, extruder for the point three. The picture of the point three shows the devulcanized material <laughs> exit from the die in a strip form that um, it is typical um, for this process. As I said before, the process is continuous, so we can collect continuously the material. See the picture in the point four. As I'll explain you later, more in detail, our second row material can be used with virgin one to create a new compound. Now, um, for the next slide, I'm going to give you um, the theory and the main feature of our process. The first import, um, important things to say is that the devulcanization process, our devulcanization process, is a thermomechanical process that doesn't involve the use of devulcanizing agents or solvents to devulcanize. As shown in the figure on the left, um, this thermomechanical process cleaves mainly the cross link of, uh, of vulcanized rubber through heat and mechanical stress. It is quite different from just reclaiming because it leads to a minimum chain scission and a maximum cross-link scission. The material that originally can flow because of the cross-link after devulcanization get a viscous flow behavior. For better um, understanding the theory of devulcanization, let's focus on the figure on the left. According to the theory proposed, um, the table shows that the chemical physical properties in terms of elastic constant of the bonds are very different in function of the analyzed bond. The elastic constant value for the carbon-carbon bond that represent the carbon bond of the rubber is 30 times higher than the elastic constant of the sulfur-sulfur bonds that represent the cross-link, while um, the bond energy between these bonds is small, it's quite small. The extruder provides to the material to be devulcanized both thermal and mechanical energy. In this way, thanks to the high temperature, it is possible to mm, excite those atoms which produce the vibration of the bonds. At this point, the shear force provided from the screw attacks mainly bond with lowest elastic constant. If we imagine the bond like a spring, 
um, in a certain point of the screw, when the shear force are constant, the bonds with a lowest uh, elastic constant may become fully elongate to their limited extensibility. Mm -hmm. Summarizing um, the synergic activities between thermomechanical energy provided from the extruder, the chemical physical characteristic of the bonds and the right screw profile can selectively break down the cross link between the chain, producing a devulcanized material. It's uh, important to uh, underline that with the same principle, we can devulcanize also peroxide bond. Understood the theory behind the thermomechanical devulcanization, now we can move on other issue, issues. The typical layout um, of the process um, is quite simple. There is uh, a gravimetric feeder that feed the extruder in a constant and continuous way. The entire process is full automatic, so you can control it easily. The length of the process zone in terms of LD is typically um, 64 uh, from um, 64 to uh, 72. The ratio LD is the, is the ratio uh, between length to the diameter of the bar. The process includes um, a degassing unit, which is able to uh, evacuate all the gases that are formed by the process. As I mentioned before, the quality of the scrap material we feed into the extruder is fundamental to have uh, a good quality product. In general, we can say that um, the original scrap material quality is directed linked to the product quality. The quality of the devulcanized material uh, is affected by many factors. First, the components of the rubber formulation can sometimes affect the product quality. For example, the presence of uh, high concentration of filler or oil can lead to a final material with different properties. Second, rubber uh, homogeneity in terms of morphology can affect the product quality. If in the um, raw materials we have both powder and crumbs, um, for example, the quality may be different during the running time. Third, having uh, a raw material made from a mixture of different kinds of rubber can have an effect on the product quality. Of course, the behavior of uh, one rubber uh, is different from one other um, during the devulcanization because um, some kind of rubber um, required different process parameter to be devulcanized. So in these terms, um, the final quality of the devulcanized material may be affected. Finally, um, the contamination uh, in terms of metals, papers, fibers can be uh, a big issue. We need to feed in our uh, extruder a clean material <clears throat> especially in terms of metal content. Thanks to a more than 10 years of experience in devulcanization process and the obtained know-how, we are able to devulcanize a wide range of rubber. For example, in the list, ELTS, both car, truck, and OTR, off-road tires, polyacrylic rubber, butadiene rubber, APDM, uh, the family uh, of fluorelastomers, butyl rubber, isoprenic rubber, natural rubber, the family of um, silicone rubber, and SBR. Now, um, the table has the purpose to give you uh, an idea uh, in terms of production rate in our extruder. From a laboratory scale um, to the big machine, we can cover a big range of of production. It is, however, important to uh, underline that those data strongly depends on the original scrap material quality, as I mentioned before. So, um, for example, um, for a laboratory scale, uh, that means our um, 20 or our 30 millimeter, um, we can produce from 5 kg per hour to 30. 
for a medium or a pre-industrial scale, that means uh, 50 uh, or 58, we can produce 80, 150 kg per hour. And for big production, uh, we can reach um, 1,000 kg per hour of our uh, 133 uh, millimeters. In the end uh, of this section, I would like to share you our most relevant uh, installation countries. As you can see uh, in the picture, we have installation all over the world. Our extruder for devulcanizing process are uh, installed in Costa Rica, USA, France, Italy, and Russia. Okay, um, that ends uh, the third part um, of my talk. Before ending the presentation, giving you uh, our conclusion, I would like to share you our interesting results in terms of case of study. We have um, obtained the data I'm going to share you from a certified um, laboratory of rubber um, located uh, in Italy, um, near Milan. The rubber uh, analyzed is isoprenic rubber. From this slide to the next three ones, I'll show you four different kinds of analysis performed to uh, our devulcanized product. In this case, the aim of the test is to uh, evaluate the percentage of cis trans isomers through uh, carbon 13 and MR. The ratio between this kind of isomer is strictly linked to the degradation in terms of chemical uh, mechanical stress. The tables on the right compare our results in green to some data from the literature about a thermochemical process. The results uh, obtained and the literature uh, evidence shows that both the vulcanized material has a certain level of trans isomer. And during the devulcanization process, the percentage of trans isomer increase. But the big difference is that uh, the um, increasing of trans isomer percentage for Maris devulcanization process is more compared to uh, the thermochemical process, which uh, in function of the percentage of a devulcanized agent added the trans isomer percentage increased much more, six times or uh, 14 times more. Summarizing the evidence shows that we are able to limit the degradation of the rubber during our process. In order to uh, evaluate the level of devulcanization um, obtained in our process, uh, we have performed um, a solvent uh, extraction test and the apparent cross-link has been evaluated. A thermogravimetric analysis have also been performed uh, because provide an indication of the composition of the analyzed sample. The results have been shown in the table. We have compared the virgin rubber not vulcanized the virgin rubber vulcanized and the rubber devulcanized. Um, regarding um, thermogravimetric um, analysis, <clears throat> the total uh, organic carbon has been evaluated. For not vulcanized rubber and for the vulcanized rubber, the value uh, is practically the same. The lower value uh, obtained for the devulcanized rubber is justified because during the grinding process, talcum powder was uh, used like anti-sticking agent. The extraction uh, analysis uh, is used uh, as an indicator of the fraction of devulcanized rubber. Briefly, is there aren't cross-linking between the chains like in the virgin rubber not vulcanized the sample is completely soluble in the solvent. If there are cross-linking between the chains, like in the virgin vulcanized rubber, the sample tends to swell and only the other components of the formulation are solubilized. 
In this case, we obtain, we, uh, obtain an 11%. After the devulcanization process, the cross-linking between the chains are uh, selectively broken. In this way, um, the soluble fraction increased to 47%. The data uh, obtained allowed to get the, the uh, apparent cross-link, which is a direct indication of the level of cross-linking for the sample. With the devulcanization process, uh, in this case, we have reached uh, a value of apparent cross-linking 10 times lowest compared to uh, vulcanized rubber. Now, summarizing from the extraction, extraction data by using Oryx model from the literature, it is possible to state that the devulcanization hill is between 60 to 80 percent, and this is a very good result. The next uh, analysis I would like to show you is the uh, evaluation of the rheological properties performed with an ODR uh, rheometer. ODR means an oscillating disk rheometer. Without enter uh, in the details uh, of the analysis, in brief, um, the rheometer measures uh, a degree uh, a degree of, um, of cure over time at a given temperature. The plot report is a measure of a torque value over time. The main parameters are shown in the tables below. We have compared um, the virgin rubber uh, vulcanized, the devulcanized rubber, the devulcanized rubber with curing agent, so a rubber vulcanized um, again, and the mixture formed by 16% of virgin rubber and 40% of devulcanized rubber. Uh, this mixture has been vulcanized with the same curing agents like before. In terms of um, rheometric parameters, we found that comparing a vulcanized virgin rubber and devulcanized rubber with curing agents, the value of the treat parameter is quite different, especially uh, for the value MH that represents the maximum torque reached from the measure, and uh, it is directly proportional to the cross-link density. Now, uh, if we compare the results between virgin vulcanized rubber and the mixture, we have found a match in the rheometric parameters, especially for the MH value, and this difference is uh, acceptable. Summarizing, we can say that uh, good results in terms of um, rheometric properties can be obtained with 40% of devulcanized material. Now uh, I'm going to conclude this section um, giving you the results um, in terms of mechanical uh, properties such as modulus uh, tensile strength elongation at break hardness. Comparing the virgin uh, vulcanized material uh, rubber and the vulcanized mixture. As you can uh, easily uh, see in the table below, the mechanical properties of the virgin material and the devulcanized material at 40% are comparable. Now uh, I'd like to end uh, with a summary of the main points. As we have found um, experimentally, um, the acute devulcanization yield is between um, 60 to 80 percent. According to our experience and our customer um, results, from 15 to 50 percent of a recycled material can be reused with virgin material for the same uh, application. Then, according to the final product properties, it is possible to increase the percentage of recycled material. And finally, uh, optimal um, process conditions and product quality strongly depend on rubber scrap composition and homogeneity. Well, uh, I covered um, the points that I need to present today. 
and uh, I like to uh, thank you uh, for taking time out to listen um, to Mars the vulcanization process. Thank you very much, Marco, for your presentation. We will start now with a Q&A session, and I will turn Luciano's Batistuta's mic on, because he will also join us for this part of the session. Hello, Luciano, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you, Agustina, for your introduction. I am uh, Luciano Batistuta, the sales area manager of Maris, responsible for North America, European, Middle East, Africa, and the CIS countries. Uh, I am here today to support my colleague, uh, Marco, for a commercial aspect in case uh, also some questions related uh, to, these, uh, to these points will, uh, will arise. So we are uh, available for any kind of questions. Uh, I'm sure that uh, for some specific question, there will not be <laughs> Uh, the time to, to go too much in deep, uh, but uh, we will be 100% available to get in touch directly with all the people that will need more, more details. Thank you, Luciano. Let's start. First question, how economical is this devulcanization process when compared to a devulcanization process that can process whole tires or rather, instead of first having to cram the tire. Well, uh, Marco, I don't know if you agree, but uh, I would like to give uh, a commercial indication on that, and uh, I, I leave you to jump in in case, obviously. But mm -hmm. since we are uh, talking about economical aspect, uh, the first uh, the first point I would like to highlight is, is the following: it is necessary to compare apple with apple. I mean. Uh, system with the same uh, system approach. Here we are proposing uh, a continuous system uh, where obviously there are some, uh, some key points that uh, will assure the success of the process. Uh, from our side, before to go in deep, uh, it will be necessary to understand what are the processes, the system into the market uh, that can allow the high level of the vulcanization without the selection of the rubber itself. We all know that uh, to make the proper devulcanization, there are some limits uh, related to the type of rubber. If we mix uh, everything in our extruder, everything in terms of different type of rubber, we can obtain uh, the proper quality. So I am wondering what is uh, the system that can devulcanize everything in terms of a mixture of rubber and maybe a contaminants uh, having a high level of quality or at least uh, the proper devulcanization product. Above all, uh, different rubber have different uh, temperature limits, for instance, so we cannot process uh, uh, two, three or four different type of rubbers, uh, even with contaminants, for instance, uh, with the same level of temperature, unless uh, you will have something that is uh, that have degradation, other parts uh, which just started the devulcanization. Um, so I, um, I have difficulties to make a comparison with such system that I don't know exactly what is, but I am free to go in deep once uh, the person that asked would like to to talk with us directly, we will be fully, fully available. Talking about our process, uh, a continuous process uh, has, uh, has for sure uh, uh, many advantages. Uh, one for all is for sure that uh, since it is a continuous system, can guarantee the constant uh, properties of the final product. It means that uh, we are not working like a batch system, then you have to control every time uh, uh, the product, uh, once the machine starts uh, devulcanizing a specific type of rubber, the mechanical pro uh, properties of the final pro product uh, have uh, a good level of guarantee and uh, they, are, uh, they are constant. Uh, so again, um, I don't know if I answer completely, but the point, uh, as I mentioned, is that we need uh, the proper base to compare the system that it was mentioned. Marco, maybe do you want to add anything on this? No, I think that uh, um, it's it's complete. 
Yeah, the other the other point is that a continuous system can can optimize the production uh, instead of a batch system that I can imagine we are comparing with. And another point, uh, I take this opportunity. The key of the success in terms of quality of the process uh, with a continuous system is the uh, is upstream the selection of the rubber. Once it is possible to identify the type of rubber to be introduced into, into the extruder, you will obtain for sure a very high quality of the vulcanized material. Why we need to, to grind the material? Uh, the point is that an extruder works uh, in a continuous system and needs to have a continuous feeding. A continuous feeding can be uh, guaranteed and ensured just when you have a free flowing material. Thank you very much, Luciano, for your answer. Next question. Reclimbing and devulcanizing are usually used as synonyms, but they are not. Can you please explain what is the difference in terms of the production process and the out of output usage? Okay, uh, I can say that uh, um, the big difference is that uh, our devulcanization um, process uh, can break uh, in a selectively wave the cross link. Um, the reclaiming uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do that because um, the reclaiming system break uh, mainly um, the bones um, without, without take care uh, about about uh, the cross link or uh, about uh, um, the carbon carbon bone. So I can say that uh, with um, our devulcanization uh, process, uh, we can um, obtain um, a product uh, with um, high quality instead of reclamation start. Can I jump in, in in this in this comment, Marco? If, if you have finished, because uh, uh, you mentioned the quality of uh, of uh, of the product, and for sure, this is another another important uh, uh, point of view about uh, the approach that we are having. By our process, uh, we are producing uh, uh, a real second. Uh, raw material, let's call it second raw material, with the, the mechanical properties uh, that we try to, to keep as much as possible closer uh, to, the, to the original virgin rubber. We know it is not possible, but uh, this is the point. By the devulcanization process made with a continuous system, you have under control continuously the mechanical properties. Uh, uh, again, it's a very selective process, uh, it is clear, but this is linked to the high quality of the devulcanized product that you will obtain. Uh, in the world of the, in the reclaiming, uh, in the reclaiming application, normally the, this type of rubber is, uh, is used, uh, can be used for, uh, for a lower level. Very poor, uh, cool. yes, yes, very cool. Great the rubber yeah, product. Is. Thank you very much. Next question. Are end of life tires that do not contain silica considered as an advantageous feedstock to devulcanization? How about end of life tires that contain silica? Okay, um, according to our uh, experience, um, we have processed both ELTS with uh, and without silica inside. I can say that um, there are a big difference in terms of process parameter and, and product quality. So I think that um, you can use both uh, as a feedstock um, ELTS that contain or not contain silica. There is there's not a problem um, for our for our process. Even even because um, the silica uh, is not in a uh, very, very uh, high percentage. Thank you, Marco. Next question. What would be the preferred minimum and maximum rubber powder or granule size 
that allows us to obtain a high quality product? I didn't get the, the first part of the question, sorry. Yes, sorry. What would be the preferred minimum and maximum rubber powder or granule okay. size? Okay, okay. Okay, mm, so I, I can, uh, yes, mm -hmm. I can um, answer um, first giving you uh, a little uh, introduction um, saying that um, the crumb rubber size um, depends on the machine used in, um, during the process. For uh, an industrial scale, we can use uh, um, without feeding problem from 1 to uh, 1.5 um, centimeter. For small scale machine, uh, we have to reduce the dimension not more than one centimeter. So um, the important things um, to get um, always constant uh, and smooth the quality is to have uh, a scrub material uh, in a very um, homogeneous um, form. If uh, if we have uh, both powder and uh, uh, and crumbs. Uh, in, uh, in the raw material, um, during the running time, we can, we can see uh, um, some differences uh, in terms of uh, aspect um, of the band and uh, uh, in terms of um, response uh, of the extruder. So we need to have uh, a scrap material uh, very homogeneous to run a good material, for sure. <laughs> I would like to add one point, uh, Marco and Agustin, if possible, since uh, Marco mentioned that uh, uh, the particle size is also related to the size of the machine. Uh, and uh, we can give some example, uh, saying that uh, uh, lower is the size, uh, lower should be the particle of the granules or of the powder. Let's make an example. We have a, a lab scale and industrial scale machine, uh, production scale mas machine in our technological center. Uh, for instance, for now we are accepting uh, processes where we have uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 until uh, 1.2. So this is already this is already powder. powder. We can already operate with uh, this level of uh, this level of powder. Sometimes uh, it is needed. It is needed a crama feeder, a force feeding hopper, and the point, uh, as Marco mentioned, is that we need a constant feeding of the of the extruders, and obviously the the particle size is also related to the to the diameter of the line. Higher is the diameter, are the diameter of the screw, uh, higher could be the accepted particle size. In fact, for a production scale machine, we are also working. Uh, with granules uh, in particle size uh, between five and uh, and ten millimeters. Luciano, one comment. Yeah. We have received yeah. one one question on this topic. They are asking one centimeter or one millimeter to clarify this. Ah uh, yes. So, uh, okay. well, well, in terms of powder, uh, we start uh, from uh, no, no mm -hmm. uh, zero six uh, zero point eight millimeter. Mm -hmm. until uh, 1.2 1.3 millimeter uh, for these are uh, the minimum that we are working with uh, for in terms of uh, highest uh, particle size and i'm again talking about a millimeter and not centimeter we are talking between 5 and 10 millimeters then it is not a matter of having a 12 millimeter or 13 you know it's a, it's a flexible what is important uh, is that uh, what is uh, introduced into the machine, like Marco said, uh, have uh, some kind of homogeneity. So a mix of powder and particles, uh, it is not well accepted by the process or powder or particles. But again, we are talking about uh, millimeters. Thank you very much. Next question. What is the approximate cost? to produce one ton of devulcanized rubber from recycled rubber powder? Uh, I am sorry to answer in the following way. We haven't got a price list for this. It is really a customized product uh, process. Uh, the configuration of the line then, then gives uh, the price uh, is related to the specific uh, project. I will be more than happy to give uh, all this uh, answer 
to the person who asked uh, if uh, we can be in direct contact uh, and go in deep uh, in, the, in the technical needs. Thank you, Luciano. Next question. How much power energy does your devulcanization technology use to give 100 kilograms per hour output? How much? One kilogram per to hour? Give one, one kilogram. Ah, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah. I can resp So, um, the value uh, of the specific energy uh, of the process is not uh, easily defined because uh, it depends on many, on many factors. Um, depends on the output, um, depends on the rheologic properties of the material, and um, for sure depends on the rubber. Depends on the process temperature, um, the screw speed, the screw profile, and, and so on. So uh, I can generally say that uh, according to our uh, experience, mm -hmm. the typical value range is from um, 0 0.5 um, to 0 0.8 kilowatts per um, kg per hour. Yeah, it is also necessary, Marco, to add that uh... Uh, you you properly uh, mentioned a range uh, that is not actually related just to one kg uh, per hour of production capacity, and uh, the value uh, ideally the the value of uh, one kg per hour it, it is not proportional. We cannot just calculate uh, that it means that for one hundred kg per hour, consequently the energy will be proportional. It is not like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, generally but speaking. Okay. Yeah, the, generally speaking, I would like to highlight that uh, one kg per hour, it is not considered for the devulcanization unless it is not just a feasibility study no, um, that we make. Luciano, uh, the value one is um, uh, is a normalized value uh, yeah. because uh, yes, the dimension is uh, kilowatt per yeah. kg uh, per hour. So uh, no, it is it is clear. It, I just want to highlight. To Yes, yes, to one, to one kg per hour, yes. No, it is yes. clear. I just wanted to highlight that uh, when we talk about the devulcanization, mm -hmm. obviously, okay. one kg Great. per hour is just a feasibility yes, yes, study. Yes, for, sure. for sure, for Yes. And yes. it is difficult to take this value as a, as a reference for other further evaluations. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you both. Next question. Can the same equipment handle rubber and also plastics without modification? Um, so, in terms of um, gravimetric um, feeder, uh, we can use uh, we can use them both for uh, rubber and plastics. Uh, we need to uh, adjust um, something, of course. Um, the extruder uh, is able to uh, to run both uh, plastic and rubber. I mean. Um, if you want to add, um, for example, uh, some plastic uh, at the top of the line during the devulcanization process, you can. You are able to do that because uh, we think that um, create uh, an adding value uh, to our um, product is the best. So, uh, in order to um, to respond um, to answer to to the question. Is it possible, uh, mainly uh, in terms of gravimetric feeder? It is, it is possible uh, for sure. Thank you, Marco. Next question. How is the demand and what are the cost indexes of devulcanized rubber versus virgin rubber? Uh, it's a good question related yes. to the values into the market. Uh... Mm -hmm. It is, it is not an easy, an easy question to no, answer. Because uh, it depends on uh, each geographical <laughs> area has different, yes. uh, uh, different type of level. And above all, it's uh, the type of the rubber that makes the difference. And then uh, we all know that uh, the raw material fluctuation is, uh, is continuous. Frankly speaking, uh, it, is different. it is difficult for me to give a value, but maybe we can postpone to a to a further evaluation with the person who asked the question. Uh, obviously, uh, the feedback the, uh, that we have from the customer to which we deliver the line, 
let us think that uh, uh, the, uh, the devulcanized product as a, as a second raw material as a, as a, as a, the proper value that make uh, make uh, the, um, that enable the customer to have the proper payback. Frankly speaking, I have uh, I haven't got values or number in my hands, but I'm fully available to to go in deep uh, uh, later this uh, this webinar. Thank you, Luciano. Next question. Are there any issues with devulcanizing two dimensional materials? For example, thin rubber sheets, sheets where the thickness may only be one millimeter. What experience do you have with this? Thank you. No, I think that uh, there aren't uh, issues, but because the shape, uh, the dimension uh, of the of the strips uh, depends um, on the dye. So uh, we have um, process uh, in the past uh, with uh, many many different types of uh, of dye, uh, many uh, many different dimensions, and uh, um, we have found any 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 big issue about that. Thank you, Mark. Next question. Would you please explain a little about your business strategy? Are you selling the system as your core business? And if so, uh, how is it the best way that your customer recovered the cost of your system? Well, what we are, since we are focused in the production of corrotating twin screw extruders, uh, uh, this is the, the mission of our company. Obviously, we are not just uh, manufacturing a struder. And uh, let me add that we are making everything internally. So we have the full control of the, of the process and of the technology. We are also providing training support uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of process. Uh, again, we are providing the struder. The upstream part, uh, that is the selection of the material, and the downstream part that is the collection of the material, each customer is doing differently. In our experience, we have seen that uh, the payback of the line, but again, uh, I, cannot, uh, I cannot show certification for this. It's uh, an informal information that I would like to share. The information we have from the market and from our customer is that uh, the payback can be done in a few years. That means uh, normally in, uh, in three years, but again, there are many, many situations because we are working with the recyclers, we are working with the uh, end user, which are uh, recycling their internal scraps. Uh, every situation is different and the payback obviously is uh, also in this case, uh, according to the specific situation of the customer. But, uh, but uh, even though we are focused in the core rotating twin screw, which is actually the core, core of the process, uh, we always try to, to support the customer working in synergy in order to enable the customer to have the complete view of the complete line in case it is needed. Thank you very much, Luciano. Next question. If the 100% devulcanized material is recured with the same cure package as the original compound, what percentage of the original physical properties would be obtained? 100%, 70%? So, um, during the devulcanization process, um, there is a loss uh, in terms of mechanical properties for sure. Because um, some some degradation uh, occur. If you see um, the presentation for in this point, okay, you can see that uh, in terms of um, rheometric parameters, we um, we can we can see that uh, we have uh, a loss uh, in terms of viscosity. In terms of um, the other, um, the other uh, rheometric parameter, yes. But if we if we uh, 
take uh, a mix, like in this case, uh, between uh, our devulcanized material, uh, 40%, and 60% uh, or, uh, or virgin material, um, the mechanical properties match, match um, quite well. So um, you are um, able to, um, to use um, this mix uh, in the same uh, application of before. But um, if uh, um, the application um, doesn't require a certain um, mechanical properties or, uh, or other things like that, uh, you can use, uh, why not, 100% uh, of uh, our material without any problem. But we don't have um, data to support this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Marco, we have time for one more question. Uh, do you also do testing at your facility? Could we test our crumb at your place? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, not. Uh, we are uh, we are um, testing machine, uh, especially for uh, for plastic. So uh, if we need to um, to test um, rubber, uh, we need to. Uh, to send uh, our uh, our sample to uh, a laboratory, a laboratory uh, that make uh, um, the analysis for us. Can, can I add one point? Maybe uh, I don't know if the person who asked can clarify. Um, are you are you referring not to Marco, but the person who asked? Are you referring mm -hmm. to? The possibility to make trials of devulcanization or trials uh, of, uh, of of a new compound. Maybe yes. there is a misunderstanding. Yes. I'm not asking to Marco, but to Agostina, if can uh, if yes, can yes. ask uh, maybe to the person or the person who ask can clarify. Uh, 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 uh. Are we yeah. talking about the devulcanized test or are we talking about uh, test mm. on the testing? Testing, yes, mm. on his test. The person who made the question, please feel welcome to to please clarify uh, this this point. And in the meantime, we can continue with mm -hmm. one, one more question. Okay. Um, the Maris website refers to rubber and rubber plus, as well as yes. plastic and plastic plus. What is the plus referring to? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did it, uh, did this, mm, mm, uh, a patent pending mm, process, uh, we, uh, improve, uh, with plus plus means, uh, mm, an improving. So with, uh, rubber uh, plus, we, uh, mm, try to mm, improve, um, the quality of our uh, product. So with uh, rubber plus, we uh, we are mm, able to produce a, a very good quality uh, devulcanized rubber. But unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a patent yeah, pending. For, yes, a patent yeah. pending process. Unfortunately, for the moment, we cannot mention it in more. Yeah. Yes. The website, yes. for sure, the uh, the attendees, our uh, our colleagues, will find also mention in plastic because we are also in the plastic fields, obviously, for mm -hmm. the rotating twist screw. And uh, but again, uh, Evorec Rubber Plus uh, is uh, patent pending, and for this reason, we cannot mention more. Rubber uh, Evorec Rubber is uh, uh, actually the the, the the process approach we are talking about now, and I take the opportunity to invite. Uh, uh, our colleagues and the attendees uh, to go in the website uh, because there there is also a video uh, which shows uh, how the devulcanization process works uh, from the beginning, from the feeding until the production of the devulcanized product. <clears throat> great, great. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, we have time for the last question. Uh, when you say you can use it in the same application as before, does that mean that your rubber can be used to manufacture new road tires? Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. We, uh, um, our customer do that. Our customer um, do that with a uh, truck uh, um, ELTS. And uh, yes, 
do that. So, uh, is it possible to um, to have a second row uh, material with our process and um, reuse that uh, in the same application? Thank you very Deleted, much. Of course, in uh, in virgin in virgin material. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Marco, for your presentation, Luciano also for taking part in the Q&A session, and thank you everybody for taking part in this webinar. We would Thanks very much you, appreciate. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We would very Thanks much appreciate you. also if you could help us uh, keep our service relevant by giving us your feedback. So we will send you a form with a few questions very soon. And also at Marvin's presentation that was shown during the conference. If you have any questions related to the webinar session, uh, please feel free to contact us directly. <laughs> we thank you again for taking part, and we are looking forward to seeing you at our future webinars. Thank you again, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>